We're going to take a look at using the dodge and the burn tool, but we're going to be using it in a totally non-destructive and an adjustable fashion. The other thing I'd like to point out before we start is you can do this in all versions of Photoshop, from Photoshop 7 right the way through to CC and including Photoshop elements. The other thing is the image itself is by Emmett Hume and it's under the Creative Commons license of Flickr, so thanks very much. Let's make a start. We're going to come over to the Layers panel. We need to put an empty layer above our background layer and we're going to do that by clicking on this icon here. In it goes and you'll notice we've got the checkerboard background. We're going to fill this with 50% grey. Now there's a rather nifty little shortcut for this. It's using Shift Delete on a Mac. That is Shift and Delete on a Mac. It is shift backspace on a PC, that's shift and backspace on a PC, which brings up the fill dialog box. Coming down to content use, you've got the choice of foreground, background colors, you might even have content aware, but coming through between black and white, you have 50% gray. Click OK to that, and there it is. Now to see through this 50% gray layer, we need to change the blend mode from normal. We're gonna drop down, we're gonna to go to soft lights. Clicking on soft lights, you can now see the image itself. Right, coming over to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the dodge tool. Now, in with the dodge tool, you've got the dodge, the burn, the sponge tool. The shortcut is the letter O. Now, remember that because that is going to come in really handy just a little bit later on. We're going to start off with the dodge tool. Let's take a look at the menu bar. Now I've got quite a large soft edge brush here. You can see it's a soft edge brush. If I click down, there it is, the hardness set to do zero. If I just press enter or return, that will remove that panel. We've got the range set to mid-tones. The exposure, default, 50% is way too much. I'm gonna drop it down between, sort of usually operate between 10 and 20%, but I'm gonna go for 10% with this. So I'm just gonna press one on the keyboard and there it is, drop straight down to 10, or of course, you can use the slider. Got protect tones ticked here. Now this isn't gonna make any difference because we're not actually using the image itself. Yes, I used to use the image itself in CS6 and you could do that, but if you make a mistake or something goes wrong, you're in a bit of trouble. This method, you can get yourself out. Let's take a look. We're gonna come in, just uh, size the brush just a little bit too big, dropping it down using the left-hand square bracket, and we're gonna zoom into the image using Command Spacebar, Control Spacebar. That looks pretty good like that. Okay, let's click down. Coming over, you can see the eye slowly begin to brighten up. Every time I click down, it gets a little bit brighter. Coming over to the other eye, doing exactly the same there. Just love the way that uh, the catch lights have been caught here as well. It really does bring the whole thing to life, doesn't it? That looks really good. Coming over, you may see two small little white spots. Those are the eyes. If we just switch it on and off, you can see the difference we're making already. Okay, let's drop the size of the brush down even further. Using the left-hand square bracket, we're gonna drop it down to this area here. Just coming down around this area, the highlights of the eyes, or the whites of the eyes, should I say, around this area as well, and into that area and this part and what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to emphasize this a little bit more so just clicking dragging it down and basically what we're going to be doing is coming over the areas that are highlighted and bringing those and emphasizing those and the same with the shadow areas we're going to be burning those down however I do want to just brighten up this area around the bridge of the nose there and you can see the way we're doing that that looks pretty good let's drop the size of the brush down again using the left hand square bracket down to that area just brighten it up around this part here and around that area. And if I just press the tab key, that just removes all the panels so we can easily see what's going on now. Full size with the picture. Let's take the size of the brush up using the right hand square bracket, just brightening down around that part. So we're gonna bring that through around this area here, around the top of the eye, or bottom of the eye, <laughs> it is. Right, dropping it down, get it right in a minute. Coming through like this, yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, let's bring the panels back, and if we take a look, that's what we've done. You can see all these various little marks. Now, I did mention it's fully adjustable. Taking a look at this eye here, now this eye over on this side doesn't look particularly good. If I just switch the background layer back on, you can see there it is there. If I just switch it back on again, right over this eye. So, what if you want to make a change to it? What if you want to sort of tighten the whole thing up? All you need to do is press B on the keyboard. Now B on the keyboard is going to change to the brush tool. Now with the brush tool selected, just bring it over the layer. And if you press the Alt or the Option key, look, 
the alter the option key changes the brush tool and you've got the target tool there this is going to pick up the color sample just watch what happens when i click down you'll see the bottom part that's black now that's the color that it was before the top part you can't see because it's 50 percent gray and that's matching in with the image look over on the toolbar you'll notice the foreground's changed to 50 percent gray so we've now got 50 percent gray on this i can come in i can come over that area there i can paint that back in so there it is if I switch it back on now, you'll notice the eye has become back to its original self. You can see how much darker it's become. Okay, pressing that letter O, remember that? That was from the Dodge tool. We're going to bring this up in size. I'm going to click down. Let's just quickly come over this again. Just bringing that back. Yeah, brightening up nicely. That looks pretty good like that. And if I drop the size of the brush down, left-hand square bracket, just over the white of the eye on this side and over the white of the eye on that side, nice right using a shift and the letter o watch what happens with this shift the letter o over on the toolbox we got the dodge tool if i use shift the letter o we go to the burn tool we drop down to the sponge tool so you can cycle through the tools by putting shift with the letter o and there it is that looks pretty good now i've got very large brush there so i'm just going to use the left hand square bracket to take it down again the exposure 50 percent i'm going to press one on the keyboard dropping me down to 10 percent that's going to be better. I'm going to come into this area here and I'm going to come down. We're going to burn this part here. We're going to darken this part down. Yeah, I'm using a portrait with this, as you may have noticed, but uh, it does work on a whole range of pictures. It doesn't have to be a portrait. It can easily be a landscape, anything where you just want to sort of bring out some of the detail. And it's a great way you'll start to see as we're working our way through with this, just coming over the areas of the shadows there, just emphasizing these. And you'll, you'll notice how much character we can bring into the face as we start to just work our way through. That looks pretty good like that. I'm going to take the size of the brush right up using the right hand square bracket. I'm going to come down around this area here. I'm going to darken that down into that part of the cheek. And if I just switch this on and off, look at the difference we're beginning to make to the image already. Looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom out using Command 0, Control 0 to go out to fit on screen. There it is there that's looking and you can see the detail we're now you know bringing out with the image still got the burn tool going to drop the size down a little bit using the left hand square bracket going to click down on the area and just darken that area of the, the eye or the brow down just a little bit going over it a few times like that now let's take a look that looks better coming down darker here's another nifty little trick got the size of the brush I want to brighten up the area now around this part now to brighten it up I'm not going to change the tool I'm using I'm going to keep the the, the burn tool but if you press and hold down so hold down alt or option we're now coming through to just take a look up here nothing's changed but holding down alt or option you'll suddenly notice this area start to brighten up so we switched over to the dodge tool so it's allowing us pressing that alt or option to swift over swift over switch over to the dodge tool so we're bringing this back i've now released it so we're now back to the burn tool we're going to come back just darken down this area of the beard here up the area of the cigarette there that looks pretty good like that so like the way this is working coming back up to the area of the band on the cap here i'm going to press down again alt or option so holding down alt or option coming through we're just going to brighten this up a little bit that looks pretty good like that Releasing the alter option, and I'm going to darken round this area of the cap. I'm going to take the exposure up. I'm going to press 1.5 in quick succession, which takes me to 15%. So I'm just going to burn it down a little bit or darken it down a little bit more like this. There, just helping to hold the eye in on the main part of our image around that part. Once we've done that, I'm now going to use uh, Shift and the letter O to take me back. I'm scrolling through until I've got my Dodge tool. That looks pretty good like this. And with the Dodge tool, I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to take it up in size and perhaps brighten just a few little bits. Again, working with the brightness that's in the image and just bring it round like that, just to give a little bit more emphasis to the creases. Once again, you can press the Alt or the Option key. This is going to take you to the Burn tool. So we've now gone back to the Burn tool, and I'm going to come in, and we're just going to come through these areas here, just giving a little bit more detail into the creases. That will just emphasize those a little bit more. Around we go like this, and there it is. Just about finished. 
that will do very very nicely so we just switch this on and off you can see the difference you can make to the image you can see how much you can bring through that detail in the face there really coming through nicely you can always come to the opacity slider as well you can drop that down if you want to and blend it in something else you might like to try let's just switch this off for a second we're going to come in and let's just take a look at the bridge of the nose there for example if i zoom in on the bridge of the nose that's where we darkened it down you might like to just come in you can always pick up a any of the lasso tools are going to come around this area the, that we did with the bridge of the nose something like that would be pretty good now if we go to filter we can drop down to blur we can go to gaussian blur gaussian blur whichever way you want to call it and you can sort of just feather that out a little bit more and you can see the way we can start to soften that out into that area there click ok to it using command d control d and there it is so we can just sort of soften our areas as well just blending it in a little bit better but it's a great way of working totally non-destructive if you want to change anything you can by just simply painting in in gray and starting again but go on give it a go until the next time it's happy imaging and take care